Hey there, banditos. Thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Dollar Bid Bandits. I am Joe Marcello. I'm Warren Phillips. I'm Mike Farah. It's Wednesday, November 23rd. So that means it's comic book day. It's hump day. But more importantly, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. So before you settle in on your food coma, why not soak in some comic book goodness with another one of our interviews? And today's interview is with none other than Philip Tan. Philip has penciled some of my favorite comics over the last 10 years. Uh, They include Final Crisis, uh, Agent Orange storyline in the Green Lantern series, and Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin series. And now Philip is going to be part of Frank Miller Presents and the highly anticipated Ronin 2. Uh, I mean, what an honor that Frank Miller and Dan Didia would say that Philip Tan is the art we want for this huge project we're putting out. And they couldn't have picked a better guy or a nicer guy. He's been sounding the drumbeat for this project, and it drops today, November 23rd. So definitely go out and pick it up. Uh, I also want to give a quick shout out to The Last Shadowhawk, which Philip Tan sort of mastermind and drew. A uh, really great um, capper to that character story. Uh, so let's get into it with Mr. Philip Tan. Hey, everyone. How are you? Um, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, we're very excited to talk to you. You you have a very interesting uh, body of work and uh, career. So we're going to start off with the same question we ask everyone, and that is, how did you first discover comic books? Oh, well, first, thanks for having me. Um, I I discovered comic books through um, well, American comic. I mean, I, I, I've been reading a lot of uh, uh, Japanese manga when I was a kid, you know, the 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 old Astro Boys, I mean, they used to come with, um, they're not even the manga size that we we know now. They're, they're smaller than that. They're maybe like a third of that size. And and I grew up in the Philippines. And I think the only uh, 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 um, um, versions that I would get back then were were this, um, they're like index cards size, you know, comic books, and they go sideways. Um, and that was the first uh, a comic book that I've encountered. I mean, if you, if you, count that but american comic books it has to be um i think i, I was in grade school and and uh, uh one of my classmates you know had uh, batman and outsiders in in his bag and and um and i've never seen anything like that i don't even know who batman is you know i, I know nothing about star wars i know nothing about you know a uh, pop culture you know pretty much um but i know some of the uh, japanese manga from from the from the few experiences I had, um, but but yeah, so so that was my first encounter with American comic books, and and started to realize that there are some shops in you know around where I grew up that sells them. So you know, and they were not cheap back there, and um, I was a poor kid, so you know, s- skip lunches and all this stuff, so I can afford one book uh, 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 for the uh, for the month. And, and what were those uh, books that you were saving up for? What were your favorite characters? Oh, um, uh, well, I, I didn't start buying them until a few years later after my first discovery of, of, of that, you know, uh, a particular Batman and Outsiders uh, comic books. Um, when I started, when I decided I'm going to start collecting them, um, it was Jim Valentino's uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And, and you know, and and that's why I always tell Jim, like you know, um, if I never expressed to, to him yet before, you know, I'll, I'll keep saying it because before I know there's a Jim Lee or a Todd McFarlane and all these you know superstars, all I know is is my hero is Jim Valentino, and he creates this amazing comic book called Guardians of the Galaxy, and and that's like my favorite. That's that's like my bible, you know, pretty much. Um, you know, growing growing up in the Philippines, you, we a lot of us goes to a Catholic school, and and I did not want to read anything else, you know, <laughs> except for comic books, you know. So, so you know, I, I was not the favorite uh, uh, student for the teachers. <laughs> well, speaking of school, you, you got your degree in architecture, and so how did you yes, I... from that and transition into comics? Um. Well, I uh, my my parents would have killed me if I if I if I took an art you know degree, and the closest thing I can I can uh, 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 you know find that has anything that that re- that that involves drawing was architecture that they would be okay with. So 
So that's that. That's how that happened. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm very thankful. You know, it. My, my, my They, they worked very hard to, to, to um, put me through school and all that. But um, I, I, I'm, I, I just want to draw. You know, for for a living. Um, I didn't really know that I'm gonna be uh, drawing comic books. Um, uh, you know, going through architecture school. It's just that you know, I, I, I think in a way, if I don't, if I don't draw things that I like, um, yeah, you know, I'm just miserable, you know, and then I can't, I can't function. So I, I guess early on, I, I, th- th- it, that was probably in me that eventually I'm going to be doing something like this. So how did you get your start in the business? Um, well, there was, there was no studios, you know, um, back then, yeah, there's no, um, official connection of, of, of like comic conventions that you can attend and show editors portfolios and stuff like that over there. Um, but, but, but luckily Will Portasho, he's Filipino. He wanted to do, you know, start a studio in school back in the Philippines. And he had, in and, and he was launching stone with Brian Heberlin back, you know, in the, in the nineties. And, and, um, and I, I, I joined one of the like the art contests that they had over there. Um, I didn't win, but but I got to know all these people. Um, you know Jerry Allen Gillen, you know a long time um, uh, Lenny Liu anchor on on all his Marvel projects. You know rest in peace. He um he's 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 in a better place now. But but you know Jer- Jerry and and you know a a, a big group of the um, Wilsis um, uh, guys back there were were nice enough to to you know, to invite me and said, Oh, how about you hang around go to school and, 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 um, you know, probably get better, try to try to absorb from everyone else and, and, and see if, um, see if you can break in, you know, there were, uh, Jay Anacleto was there and, uh, Gilbert Monsanto and all, you know, all these, all these people, um, that are aspiring artists, you know, um, and, and I think when I, when I, when I started, when I started to go, um, Lenil was already doing Wolverine, so he's kind of like you know going, uh, 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 evolving into whatever his career evolved into, um, but but there wasn't really any um, like solid, solid plan for me. You know, we 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 didn't know that you're gonna be able to, um, break in or you know this or that, um, through that that place. You know, um, and eventually. I just got tired of um, I just got tired of, uh, of of waiting for 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 an opportunity and whatnot, and I kind of put together a group of people, friends, and um, uh, did this book called Tailweaver, you know, not knowing if it's gonna go anywhere. And um, Brian, Brian Heberlin and Will Sportasho, uh by 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 good luck, um, brought it to to Wildstorm, and they were having a meeting, and they pick it up. So that's how it happened. Interesting. Sorry, that was a long story. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely. Look, no. That's why we asked this. Everyone has interesting stories, you know, like from discovering comics to how they got their start, the path and how they got to where they are is always very interesting. So that's why we ask. It's never, except for maybe one person, like probably like Kevin Dooley. He was like, I'm going to work for DC. He walked in, he worked for DC, he started doing Green Lantern. I, was like, wow, I, I wish we had the that end of kind it. Of... <laughs> so, yeah, no one else has had that much of a direct path in their career. So. <laughs> that was a short question, Brian. But yeah, no, but we now I, it, I, you know, it, it was, it was, it was. Um, I w- w- weren't really expecting to be. Um, to I, I, I guess, I guess, when you're growing up in in a foreign country, and and back then there weren't really like internet and and all this um, social media and and stuff that. The idea of your, of your 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 whatever your creative ability can 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 produce and and bring it to to outlets you know in, for 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 either be comic books or whatever uh, uh uh multimedia outlets it's it's really tough to imagine that back then um so so you know you know, it, I I I guess I'm lucky in in that aspect. Very cool. So I think we're going to hop to some of your individual work a little later, but I wanted to ask you, since you've been doing, you know, a number of um, covers lately, uh, although uh, you yeah. know, I know you're working on new series, 
So you, you've been mixing, uh, you know, interiors and covers probably throughout your whole career, but uh, especially in these days of um, variant covers, you know, that that yeah. tends to uh, be a bigger portion of the work nowadays. Do you like or prefer one over the other? And if so, you know, which one or what do you like about each one of them? Those two kind of gigs. I, I, I do like interiors a lot more. Yeah. Um, and 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 the funny thing is, I've I, 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 I've just realized after 20 years in the industry that that I I don't think I'm I'm the best person to to draw a story that would have a full script. And and I never knew that, you know? And and I'm 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 sure a lot of my my editors are so frustrated working with me because I'm always late, I'm always slow and all these things. But you know, um recently and I, I know I'm kind of like jumping the, the the topic now. I'm you know working with with Frank, you know, I, I, it, it just kind of like dawned on me that, oh my God, not having a full script made me enjoy it so much more. And I'm so much more productive. I'm doing, you know, the process better, you know. Um, but, but yeah, so, so for the longest time, I, I, I think I thought, oh, you know, maybe the interior you know drawing the stories and stuff like that is not for me and maybe i'm just better suited to do, do you know a one you know one of illustrations covers and, and and designs maybe but but now i i i absolutely enjoy drawing interiors right now so you really work in the marvel method or you prefer the marvel method you know where I do, it, I so do you're prefer. getting the plot and yeah. you're sort of breaking it down yourself and then Frank will come back in to do the dialogue. Is that how it works? Well, well, it, it, it's a little, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, but but the EE will kind of rewind a few years ago. I, I would say maybe five seven years ago. Um, and coincidentally, it was with Dan DiDio. He needed an artist to work with him on 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 the Outsiders. Um, and and. I, I guess the situation was back then that because he doesn't have time to write the script, he really can't find an artist. And, and, and I, I signed on, you know, I, I said, Oh yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do it. But, you know, I didn't really know that I'm going to enjoy that, that, that way of working together yet. Um, but we will go to a, a diner and then DC was just moving to Burbank and, you know, there were, there were, he's taking, monthly trips from, from New York to Burbank. And we would meet at the diner and he, he didn't really have any, um, he didn't even write down the plot. He would just act out whatever he, he you know, the story would be. And we would kind of go through the entire issue's story. And I would be writing down notes inside the diner. And and that would be the first time, you know, I, I, I encountered that. And, you know, um, fast forward to now, where Frank would give me small uh, a thumbnails of of what's gonna go on with with Ronan, and and it, he would say, okay, this is what's gonna happen for the for the the five pages here, the ten pages there, the twenty the the three pages after, um, that's what's gonna happen. These are the thumbnails, and you go on and make your interpretations, and and let's you know let's let's gel the story together and, and 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 see what your take would bring um and i will draw it and then frank would go back and make sure that okay you know this is what i want here you did this right you did you, this this doesn't work and adjust it from there um and then the, the the script afterwards but but you know it was a much more organic way of 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 creating it and and maybe it's not for everyone you know i'm not going to say it's the best way to do comic books because it was just the best way for myself. So. Yeah, that's interesting. We've heard a few people discuss about their methods and, you know, by which, you know, Marvel versus DC works. And it seems like a lot of people kind of prefer the, the Marvel method. Um, but, you know, as you mentioned, it, you know, everyone has their own way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, some people prefer it, you know, one over the other. And it just seems to gel. But I... I always find it interesting when people start throwing around and I had no idea about what that referred to at first. Oh, the Marvel method is good. Oh, I put Marvel. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Guys? But no, well, I mean, I, it's I, very I, interesting. I, sorry. No, no, no. I'm just, Oh, I, I, you know, I, I just think that, you know, everyone would have their own 
interpretation of of what what is a marble method you know um when 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 you have a collaborator that comes in and tells you the entire plot and it ends there and you're and then you go home and and, and, and comes back with with every page every you know transition every beat of the story and 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 and, and all that stuff mm-hmm. compared to the 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 creator i mean your collaborator comes in and tells you every single page this is what's going to happen but n- they're not going to break down how many panels how many you know how many um action scenes or whatnot that those that's still a Mar- marvel method mm. you know they're both very different but they're still both kind of like the old marvel method you know um the only thing that would be much more specific is the the full script where every panel is broken down every single line i mean i'm, I'm sure the writers are always telling the the artist that okay you're free to do whatever you want um but this this is just you know my take on what's going but i i have a feeling that most artists or especially the 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 the, the younger artists they would just follow and copy everything right and because I, I did that and and i've realized that i don't i do not enjoy it makes sense so you you mentioned earlier actually right before we started when we were chatting but um so you're going to be doing some writing coming up and um well i did already so you did but um yeah. what so as an artist which do you prefer the writing or or the I, artist that, that's really tough um i i i i'm i'm obviously much more new to the writing aspect of of, of this whole um whole process but I, I i think being able to orchestrate and craft your images that's gonna kind of like sing well to to the story you have in mind you know just gives you some a, 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 a euphoria that i can't explain you know like b- being able to draw a nice picture or, or, or like a really good scene or a really good pin up or a really good cover it's it's fun it's 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 very satisfying but being able to create that series the series of 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 visual uh scenes that 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 goes very well with what you what 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 you what you orchestrated it, it's just a complete level of satisfaction you know I, for for me that's how it feels like um i i don't really have a lot of that out there yet you know um most of my stuff right now, you know, eighty percent of what I'm working on right now are mostly, you know, with 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 Frank, um, and but but you know, you know, on the side, I'm I'm doing my own stories, and you know, uh, uh my um, my my art partner right now on 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 Frank's book, uh, Daniel Enriquez, um, you know, he'll you know he's 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 someone I I, I absolutely love working with. Um, I, I I regret not not getting together and work with working with him a, a lot earlier, but but you know the the the, the book I'm writing and and be, be be drawing is is gonna pretty much be me and him, you know. Hopefully sometime in the future, but um but yeah. Um. So <clears throat> I know I mentioned earlier I'm a Green Lantern fan, and you had a chance to work with Jeff Johns, uh, yeah. and on a couple of Jeff collaborations. Awesome. And I would love to know what that. So you you work with him on Green Lantern on um, uh, the Agent Orange story uh, story arc, but also on Masters of the Universe. Now, is that just by chance that you guys ended up working together, or did uh, well, I, were you chosen I, I, by Jeff? No, no. I, I think um, Masters of the Universe is is just, just it, it was just coincidence. I got it. Okay. You know, and and I I I I mean I I remember I did like three three issues, you know. So I I didn't do like a lot for on on that, but um, and I wasn't as as um. Well, th- th- this is how it happened with with Green Lantern. You know, it it was really funny because I thought I'm gonna come up with all these different new lanterns for for Larflees. I didn't know they're all dead, so I I I I created like. I don't know, like 30, 50 lanterns. And then and, and I just got it. And then suddenly I got an email from, from Jeff. Phil, stop. They're all dead. 
you know, don't 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 come up with new ideas. <laughs> um, but 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 you know, Jeff's awesome, you know, because um, uh, uh, you know, he um, he obviously have have the the entire Black Estate, you know, a uh, uh, yeah. uh, master plan going on, and and be able to kind of compartmentalize every single a uh, corner. And, and right to the to to kind of the strength of the artist he's working with is 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 phenomenal. So, but anyway, so so that's that that's that's why it's very different. Well, in in Master of the Universe, there's not really a lot to 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 create. You yeah. know, they're 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 pretty much there. Did you so when you're working on something like Master of the Universe, which is you know someone else's property? Obviously, I mean. Green Lantern is DC's property, but like, you know, Master of the Universe is more or less pretty much set. Yeah. You know, were you kind of kind of held under, you know, you know, kind of like, no, you can't do that, or were you held to like strict um, constraints as to what no, you can actually do? no. I actually no, because because I I I think when you walk in, when you enter the project, knowing that's that's the kind of like the parameters that's 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 your environment then you wouldn't think too much that oh you know i want to create this i want to do this i want to try that you're, you're not going to do think about all of that and and as a matter of fact i i think i had to bow out of the master's universe project a little earlier um and then i i'm pretty sure it's it's health or or some other reason i, I forgot but I, I think I only did like three to four issues, I think, and then that was it. Got it. So, so, so you know, there wasn't a lot of conflict either, but there wasn't a lot of, um, you know, room where I felt like I wanted to like bring in certain things, like in Green Lantern, where I wanted to create the lanterns, you know, do this and do do that kind of stuff. So it was a very different approach. That that must be really. Uh an interesting or just a fantastic moment to know that you've added to the mythos of, of a character because I mean, Oh, definitely. That, yes. Larflees is really, you know, just an interesting character, but they really, you know, they were able to flesh out that the story of that character and establish, you know, what, what you created those other lanterns, which were, it was really fantastic. Just all these different lanterns popping up and, you know, they all have the green, I'm sorry, the, the orange silhouette that just to come to realize that they're all dead, which was, you know, really, really cool. Um, that just must be fantastic. You know, you something you hang your head on at the end of the day and be like, yep, that's, that was all me. It's just a, well, I mean, I, fantastic. I, 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 I think I'm still kind of like, you know, uh, 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 tagging along the, 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 the you know, the powerhouse that is Jeff on, on that in that in that uh, scenario there, um, and, but but definitely very proud that, to be to be contributing to that. Um, you know, one one thing I don't know if um, um, I'm I'm sure it's okay to talk about it. I you know I there was there was a Green Lantern Earth One project that 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 did that I was supposed to do with um with with with, with Jim Lee and Brian Azzarello, mm -hmm. and and it didn't happen. And I, I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll, you know, and, and it was supposed to be a, kind of like um, a, a John Stewart kind of like Green Lantern meets Star Wars, you know. So we're creating okay. all this new race again, all this new, you know, um, creatures and, 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 you know, and all kinds of new stuff. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've posted some of the uh, concept art on, on my social media before. Um, but but those are the moments where you felt like, okay, then then I felt like I'm gonna be able to start something uh, exciting, and I, I thought, oh, you know, all, all the creatures that I created with 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 Larflees that didn't got used, maybe I'll use it here. So, very very interesting. Now you had a chance. You were working at, at DC in a really interesting time, and for me personally, I, I'm a huge DC fan. If you you can obviously already tell, but you know. For me, the period before New 52, I think DC was really hitting its stride again. And then New 52 happened and it really shook things up. Um, and then you you were had a chance to work on a number of those New 52 titles. Do you, what is your take on the New 52 as a whole? 
Were you? I, I, I we I'm talked actually, to. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say we talked uh, to Dan DiDio about it, and you know he presented. You know he told us about his goal for it, which I think you know, it, you know, is to introduce new characters and get gain new readers, and he you yeah. know definitely accomplished that. But it upset a lot of people as well, just because well you know comic book fans are very fickle. But um, what was your take as someone on the inside? Were you pleased with the new Fifty Two as a whole? Yeah. Well, I I think it was the most important part for me when it comes to you know just just the the approach of New Fifty Two is that. You know, Hawkman is one of my favorite characters ever. I mean, at, at least in, especially in inside DC. I mean, there's, there's, there's Kyle Rayner, Qatar, and then Azra, Jumpel Valley, Azra, and 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 those are my favorite DC characters. And and to be to 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 be kind of relaunching and and, and kind of creating a, a a new, you know, story for Hawkman was 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 big for me. So, as you know, my, my from my point of view, I love it. You know, this is like, oh, there's nothing better than this. I'm gonna be able to, you know, contribute to to yeah. to Hawkman, one of my favorite characters. You know, I mean, it it it, it didn't really plan out, but I'd rather not talk about that part. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. I mean, uh, I you know, I think we've all heard you know people's take on it, but I, I mean. At first, I was, you know, as a DC fan, I was, um, I was upset, confused, hurt. No, uh, I was, <laughs> I was, you know, I, I was a little, uh, dare I say, put out by it, only because uh, I put off by it because it was, you know, like I said, there were there were stories and characters that I was really happy with, characters like were really taking off, and then all of a sudden they went away. Um, but to your point, there were characters like Hawkman, um, and many, uh, like, you know, Harley Quinn really had a chance to really, to shine, yeah. um, and, you know, a bunch of others. And that's, you know, that's what I kind of really appreciated about it. Like I, you know, I always, I thought Hawkman was cool and, um, you know, there were various origin stories, uh, uh, for Hawkman, and they kind of reined it in a bit, and this is what they were going with. Um, and then, you know, there were some other things that really pissed me off, like Superman, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but now it's okay, because everything matters, and there's a hundred different universes, and everything happened at some point or another. But anyway. Um, uh, what was your... And before we move on, because I think I've talked enough about 52. But... Um, <laughs> Your overall experience with DC, were you pleased with, you know, the, the process by which they did things compared to, say, some other projects that you were that you did work on versus kind of what you're doing now? Yeah. Well, one thing I have. You know, is without them, I'll be I'm employed for a few for quite some years, so I'm very I thankful. Mean, there's that, for, too, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But uh, but but I. See, this this is the deal where when when you, when I when I was never you know and I didn't experience being a fan here, you know, going to conventions, knowing all these things, you know, while you were still a fan, it's 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 probably a very different feel compared to someone who got into the industry, moved to another country, you know, from another country, and and suddenly you were working for this company. Mm-hmm. And if it's the first thing, and it's the only, it's it's the only uh, uh, um, view that you've you you've seen, then you're not gonna have as much problem with it, you know. Um, and I don't know if I'm answering your question correctly, but but I I just felt like if I know DC or or how it worked before yeah. as a fan, and then I come in and and have all these expectations of oh it used I heard it used to be like this, or I, I know it used to be like this, then you might have disappointments and, and things that might not be um, matching to your expectations. Got it. So, so it's kind of probably very different for me. Understood. Okay. So another character you've had a decently long history with is Spawn. 
and you know you've done <laughs> yeah you, you've done uh you know interior art you've done covers um you, you've contributed quite a bit to uh the mythos of spawn how did you first get involved uh with that book and character well i was um i was working with with stan winston the special effect master um oh, yes. on his creator own book for image and once that was done uh brian heberlin um you know he was he was close with todd they were working together on a lot of different things it was coloring spawn and todd needed an artist you know oh you know um i think angel medina was was moving on to another project and that opening came out and i said oh absolutely you know i i i love todd and and i love spawn and and um I, I think for a long time in my in my high school years where I I I broke broke my leg and I was bedridden for six months and it, it was mostly in the 90s and that's when I started picking up comic books again um because I stopped for a while after 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 the whole guardians and and all that during during grade school I stopped for a while and spawn is what kind of brought me back so so I love spawn um so when when the opportunity came up i i said yes and and immediately jump on and were you working um directly with mcfarlane at all or had he moved on in, from his writing or well, co-writing duties i i think todd now works you know a lot closer to his to his uh, uh pencilers and 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 other creators um as he is writing a lot of his a lot of the books right now right um but but when when I got in, Todd would Todd would kind of you know have a meeting and go through the things that we're doing, and 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 we had to, this very talented uh, uh, writer, uh, David Hine, you know, um, write write the book, and um, but but I think David is 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 uh, from the UK, so there was no Zoom back then, uh, you know. I I think phone call was was all we're getting, um, and. Um, and and it, it would probably just be like a, a visit to Todd's office every few months. Now, what was your thoughts on the character? What did you want to bring to the table that um, you thought could be a little different than maybe what some other artists had brought? I never thought about that, you know? I, I, I just felt like everyone had their own voice with Spawn. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit more well at, at least i enjoy spawn when, when it was more horror oriented you know um rather than 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 pure superhero so so that's that's all i was i, I tried to do that's all i tried to do um i didn't i didn't really like thought about okay who's doing what back then what did greg do what did angel do what did todd himself did i i did i i you know it was just never something that um that crossed my mind is there a difference for you um, working on a book that you have such a, a close relationship with? Like you just said before, Spawn sort of came into your life in a time and you, you started to love it. When you had the opportunity to work on a book like that, is it a different kind of mindset than maybe a character that you're not very familiar with, but you're, you know, you're just doing the, the, the art for it? I, actually, it did not. It, uh, fun, um, that, that's kind of funny, you know, I know that I think about it. I, it, it did not, you know, I, 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 I think most artists, when you get on the project and and even if it's not your favorite pro character, your, 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 your favorite hero in the entire planet, you still try to say, okay, I need to have a voice in creating this, um, the, the, the visuals or just or the or writing the story. Um, so I'm going to do my best and, and, and hopefully bring a different experience that people will like. So it, it was ne it was never okay. I'm drawing I'm drawing the X Men, which is which which are characters I like, and then I'm drawing the Avengers, which are popular, but I don't really like them as much as the X Men. So I'm gonna put more effort in the X Men. No, it doesn't work like that for me. You know, it's you you still try to kind of you know like I said earlier, present something hopefully unique enough that's yours and 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 people will like it. So we've talked about, a little bit about Image, uh, a little bit about DC. Uh, you just brought up the X-Men um, and, and Avengers. 
I was curious to hear, you know, what your experience was like with the X-Men, which was, I think you cited as, you know, some of the characters you really liked growing up, uh, being able to sure. work on, on that book. Um, what was that like? I, I, it, it was, well, it was, it was a, a very tough lesson for me. It, it was my fault for, it, it, you know, it, it was early in my career. It was very naive, very inexperienced. And, and when they asked, can you pencil and ink two books a month? I, I said, yes, you know, which obviously I can't do, but, um, but, but I, did, I tried my best and I absolutely had a, a great time working on the book. You know, I, 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 you know, some people might not like it. Some people might like it, but it, it was, it was such a great experience for me. Love every moment when I was on the book. And, and now that, you know, we've talked about a little bit that you've worked extensively in, you know, these three big companies, and, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, y- your new work with Frank Miller, but it, do you think, do you feel a difference when you're working with Image versus DC versus Marvel? And do you think there's one that's just more you or, or suits you best? And, and you know, um, it, 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 it probably might come down to who you're working with but you know working with with Todd and and Jim Valentino and 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 with Frank you know I mean Frank's not image but you know work working with non-Marvel or DC projects definitely gave me a lot more room to 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 play to adjust to to grow you know where where you're on a um where a big company's title you know, you, 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 you definitely have to stick to a schedule and, and by schedule, I'm not just talking about a certain kind of, you know, publishing deadline, but you, your, your, your schedule, you know, your schedule is okay. they they have plans on how their stories are going to go. So you stick to that. There's not really a lot of, okay, I need, I, 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 I'm, I, I want to experiment on this or I, I want to try that. You know, there's not really a lot of that sense and now you know everyone is very excited there's a lot of buzz about you about frank miller presents uh this new project going on uh how was it presented to you and uh how long have you been in the mix with all this i um and the, through the entire pandemic you know um i was well it, it was it was funny because because um so so when when the pandemic happened, you know, um, you know that. I mean, well, okay. Uh, going even further back, you know, um, before the pandemic. So when when I think I was done with DC, you know, I wasn't doing more stuff for them, um, and I kind of want to, you know, uh, do creator own stuff, and. And, you know, Dan has been, uh, 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 you know, he was my boss. He was a, a, a good friend and, and he really, you know, uh, was a good mentor to me, you know. And so we, we still chat a lot, even when I was, was not working for DC. And I would always joke about, you know, Dan, if, if, if Frank ever wants to have someone to clean his studio or, or take up the trash, you know, please let me know. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I, I'd apply for the job, you know? Um, and, and, you know, that the joke would end there. And, and I never really kind of like did anything for DC with Frank, you know, for, or for Dan. Um, and, and fast forward to the pandemic and, and, um, you know, a lot of uh, bad things happened and, 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 uh, and, um, you know, Dan separated from DC. So, so, um, and after a while, Dan says, well, you, you, you're still interested in working for Frank? Well, I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, 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 um, and I was asking, so what are we doing? You know, and, um, and, and he says, you know, we're, Frank wants to re, relaunch a, a Ronin, you know, um, and, and it'll be on, and I was like, for, for DC, are you going to go back and work with them? I was like, no, 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 you know, and we're doing Frank's own company, all that stuff. So, so that's how it started. 
and I have to get tip my hat to you and give you a lot of credit because these are two industry heavyweights and you are the guy they chose to do the art for their this big project. So it's really, you know, kudos to you because you are now, you know, the face of these books with your art. And I think they couldn't have picked a better guy for it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm very fortunate, you know, um, and I, I, I also think, you know, I, I've been, I've been drawing a lot of uh, uh, sketches and, and, and doodles and whatnot. And, and I would share with Dan, you know, even when we're, you know, I, just, just as friends. And I, I guess there was just way too much samurai and swords and stuff in there that he probably thought, oh, okay, I, I think I already got my guy, you know, um, <laughs> That's that's probably how they happen. I, I don't know for sure. I mean, you can probably ask Dan and and find out, you know, the details of that. But but I think um very fortunate. I'm I'm very lucky to to I mean, it, it it was also it, it was it was really funny because when when he first uh, uh asked me to, to if if I'm interested, I said, Well, you know, I I, I absolutely am. But I, I I need to, you know, I'm in the middle of of, of putting together a, a creator on thing or I, I or, or doing some creator own thing and 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 can you can you wait a few months and i'm like oh my god did i just ask frank miller to wait for a few months and um and it's like well if he can't wait I'll, I'll i'll find a way and 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 make it happen but then and and dan says oh no, no no it's okay you know we'll 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 we're we'll still planning things and 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 um and setting things up so it didn't happen immediately um, but long story short, my, you know, uh, uh, whatever creator owned stuff I'm trying to do, um, you know, have a lot of roadblocks, you know, it, it was, it was not as, you know, I, I, I think when, when you're an artist and, and I, what I didn't know is, is most of the other artists who's doing creator owned stuff, or, you know, they, they, they obviously, aside from, whatever, you know, they get advances and stuff like that. And I, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, okay, you know, just to be fair, if you're not getting paid, I'm not getting paid then, you know, let's all try to do this. It doesn't work like that, you know, you, you have to put food on the table, you have to put roof on your head. So, so it was, uh, but, but of course, it still comes down to me being slow. That's why. Um, and, and, but anyway, so, so when, when, when it was time to, 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 get together with 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 dan and frank and um you know things just you know flows pretty very smooth you know i you know frank says this is this is the system i kind of want to work with and i'm like oh yeah that's perfect for me you know i i think i've you know i i i i'd like to try that and and finding out i really enjoy it is there anything you can uh, tell us about uh, Ronin 2 without um, spilling the beans completely? It's definitely mature readers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I, I think you'll, you'll absolutely enjoy what Daniel and I are. I mean, I, I can't even call, call our relationship as pencilers and inkers at this point because, you know, Frank would give us the thumbnail and, and, and I would... I would do the, the pencils and Daniel would come in with inks and I would do a tone tone pass, which is screen tones, which we don't really mm -hmm. see a lot anymore in, in American comic books nowadays, right? Um, and Daniel would go and, and address it and, and Frank would come in and we would, you know, kind of, so, so the whole process is, you know, and you'll see that the art would just say, Frank Miller, Philip Tan, and Daniel Enriquez, because that's what it is. You know, it, it's, you know, I, I I felt like Daniel deserves more than just being called the inker of the book, you know, um, and and to, to not spill anything, the only thing I can tell you guys is just going to look very different from, from most of the comic books that we have out there. And I, I, I think people will like it. I think everyone will, you know, have a, a fun experience going through the, the, the book. Well, oh, and uh, it's it's fifty pages every issue. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah, Dan was talking about how you guys are playing with format and uh, price point and what all of this stuff, you know, making it sort of this uh, luxury items out of these books. Is well, initially, with <laughs> fifty pages um, with ads here. No, I'm just. Kidding. I have not. Well, initially, 
initially Frank wanted, and and if if um if we ever release some kind of like the or the early layouts or the drafts, you can connect the entire fifty pages, and it will be just one continuous nonstop action. But but obviously that that would affect the story a lot, and and that would kind of force. So we didn't go with that. Um, you can still kind of connect it, but it, it it it's not as smooth as the first draft that we have. But that would have been really fun to do. Well, we for sure are looking forward to this book a lot. Thank um, you. I wanted to jump back, though, because sure. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, bring up The Last Shadowhawk, which was oh. a fairly recent release. We had Jim on uh, just around the release of that book. Um, and he was telling us about, you know, how the, the how big a role you played in sort of getting that off the ground and executing it. Can you tell us a little bit about how yeah, yeah. that all came I'm, about? I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Super proud of it. You know, it's my first uh, first officially credited writing credit. But 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 um, the the reality is when when I first you know when I pitched the the project to Jim and I was like Jim Jim please just let me do this you know I'm a big fan of yours you're my first hero and I, you're still a big hero of mine so can I do this and and he, Jim finally uh, uh, gave in and said okay okay you know we'll, we'll do we'll do the last shadow hawk and and I turned and I turned in the first first script complete with layouts and breakdowns for issue one and jim's like issue one no phil this is a one shot <laughs> so there is only one issue yeah so so um you know uh so we we had to kind of like we and and, and 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 i think it worked out even better because because jim now now i have to make him work so he had to come in and 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 fix you know a lot of the the parts that might be missing and make sure and rewrite some of the things and and I I you know super I'm super proud of it. So that's how it happened. It's a great it's a great book. You should be proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we know that you're working on you know uh, Ronin two, um, but is there anything else that you have coming up that we can look out for? Not anytime soon. I mean, you know, there's. I mean, you know, I'm sure that's taking up a fair amount of your time, but yes, it, it, it yes, it is. You know, um, I'm 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 pretty much like a hundred percent Ronin and 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 squeezing, stealing time away from me and my daughter <laughs> to, uh, to do some other stuff. But but um, there's another really really exciting project. I, I'm I'm sure Frank is gonna be unhappy if I if I tell you what it is, but it's still for Frank. Um, and okay. it's going to be after Ronin okay. and it's going to look completely different from Ronin, but you will still know it's me and Frank. Got it. That, that would be next year sometime or maybe Ho after Ho that. Hopefully, okay. hopefully, okay. hopefully. All right. Cool. Hopefully. Um, yeah. where can fans follow you on social media? Um, I am at, uh, Instagram, Philip Tang Creations. Um, Oh, I think it's Philip and Art. I, I I don't even remember my own Instagram. Um, I mean that's the hard part. You just turn on your 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 app and you don't really see what your exact um. It's like when someone um, asks you your own cell phone number, you're like, I don't yeah. call myself. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. You know, I I I'm pretty bad with. I mean, you know, the 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 all the hiccups that I've gone <laughs> through just just to log on with no pictures and everything. I I'm pretty bad with all these, man. Okay. But um, but yeah, I, I I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, but I, pretty much just Instagram is is my um, or or Facebook is my main um, main accounts, you know, where I where I uh, procrastinate. <laughs> we'll find you. We'll seek you out. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, Philip, I want to thank you so much for you know for taking the time out of your day to join us and talk to us. Thanks, um, man. Well, I I enjoyed this. I I, I, thank I you. it was it was it was very casual and. Yeah, I was really scared, you know. I I, I thought it was going to be a very strict, uh, formal no. interview. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are as loose as loose gets. Yeah. Well, yeah. Don't let this I mean, collared never, shirt never done uh, this before. trick you. Yeah, if you see us after we have a couple of drinks, we're like, hey! No. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no. Yeah, we, you, you know. Then you'll start to hear about all these Green Lantern stuff that never happened. <laughs> Wait a second. Let's, let's, let's get back into this. I have to tell you, um, you know, for one... You know, we definitely would love to have you back. 
Um, you know, certainly when, my when uh, you know, Ronan comes out. And yeah. I really would love to dig more into the Sam Winston stuff. I mean, I'm a huge horror fan. I adore Stan Winston and his effects studio. And um, you, when you mentioned that, I was just like, what? What? What is that? Orin's looking at me like. Well, I, I, I did four issues of, of his um, of his uh, creator owned uh, book in the you know way back. That's awesome. Um, uh, you know, I, I I wish I could have spent more time visiting him and learning from him, but yeah. um, but, you know, I I I didn't know how to uh, grab onto opportunity back then. Oof. Fair enough. Fair enough. So you didn't make any of the actual creatures. No, no, I wish, <laughs> I wish I did. I, I, I wish I spent more time there learning from him. That would have been, you know, that would have been great. Uh, just one quick question about that before we go. Uh, were there, was there any um, maybe crossover between artists, you know, like maybe doing design work for the, the effect stuff um, versus, you know, like comic book related stuff? But, but um not for myself. I mean, I don't have that. I didn't have the opportunity yet, but I'm okay. sure there's a lot of artists in the industry right now who is doing that. Okay. You know, I think there's a lot of people who's who's doing comic book covers and, and designing the MCU movie stuff or the D, the DC uh, movie stuff, um, and even more for games. You know, or 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 toy designs. They're, they're, you know, with 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 um, with you know, just being able to send files, you know, all these uh, uh, things are so much easier to do now. I, I, yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them who are doing special effects and comic books. Yeah, they're so closely aligned and one, obviously, you yeah. know, they influence each other. You know, it used to be one That's way, true. more or less, but now yeah. they definitely influence one another and there's a lot more uh, alignment between, you know, the look and feel. I, I don't know if you guys ever, stuff. you guys watch the... Uh, <laughs> The, the the lights and magic on, on Disney Plus. Yes, yes. Blew my mind, man. Yeah, that's really an awesome cool show. It's so it's so it's so inspiring. I, I'm I'm sure half of that is is maybe not it not not exactly true. <laughs> you know, just just to uh to uh, but but it blew my mind. It's it's very inspiring. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Oh, so... it's it's a great show. It's just six episodes too. Oh, it's so cool! Like how they that do, is like... not a big commitment. No, which is what I'm looking for. <laughs> well, I mean, if if your work, uh, I guess, I, I guess you know, I'm, I I cheated then because I can work and put it on. You, you know, go. you don't even have to watch it. You, you just need to listen to it. <laughs> nice. Show how they blew up the Death Star. It's like really. Cool. <laughs> it's kind of like our episodes. <laughs> well, you, you could know, watch I, them, but you could also just listen to them. It's much better I, I if never, you listen to them. I, 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 I don't know anything about Star Wars until I started working for DC. And and the first thing my editor told me, you go home right now and watch all these Star Wars films or else we're not working together. Because <laughs> I don't know nothing about Star Wars. And 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 I was um one of my earliest projects was with Greg Rucka. And and Greg Greg's an amazing person, and but he sent me literally overnight, ordered through Amazon, sent me the, the Indiana Jones trilogy and says, Phil, if you don't watch this, we're not working together. <laughs> you, you know, w watch watch this. At least you'll learn how to draw a, a decent fedora. And we're back. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to Philip. He's worked on, like I said, some of my favorite stories of the past few years. And don't get me wrong. I love talking to our favorite creators from the 80s and 90s, but I still collect comics today. So I love hearing, you know, what goes into some of my favorite storylines. Yeah, I think Philip Tan, he's already a star in the comic game. And I think what he's doing now is going to help push him into superstar stratus. And I think it's pretty cool. We have his very first interview. I was going to say the same. Yeah, he mentioned that this was his first interview. How can that be? Um, yeah, everybody go and pick up uh, Ronin 2. Philip Tan just get, keeps getting better and better with each project, and I think you guys will really enjoy this one. Uh, before we go, I wanted to give a quick shout-out to Mr. Eli Schwab, who is the publisher of Cosmic Lion Productions, cosmiclionproductions.com. Check it out. It's an independent comic uh, uh production studio i would say and um he does a lot of great work um 
you should check out all the different books they have. I found out about him because he has an issue of a fanzine that has a fan art of NFL Super Pro, the sort of patron saint of Dollar Bin Bandits. So, Eli, thanks for that. I hear it's in the mail. Um, we appreciate it. Everybody go check out Cosmic Lion Productions. And that'll do it for this episode of Dollar Bin Bandits. Thank you for listening. Thank you in general, because it is the day of thanks tomorrow. So we appreciate all of you guys listening and watching. And uh, please rate, review, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.